please welcome to the stage Kathy Leslie, Chief Executive Officer of Engineers Without Borders USA. Good morning. So like all good meetings, we start with a selfie, right? All right, so shout and say hi. Perfect. So good morning and welcome to Pittsburgh. I'm happy to see everybody on this fine Friday morning. And as you can tell, I'm always energized by our conferences. I see a lot of old friends, not just in age, but a lot of old friends. And I look forward to meeting those of you that I don't know. Um, and for those of you that I don't know and we couldn't hear the announcement, um, I'm the Chief Executive Officer for Engineers Without Borders, a job I love. Um, and it's absolutely my pleasure to be representing you all out in public. So I have to tell you, when we landed on our theme for the conference, Dare to Dream, I was a little bit hesitant. Engineers talking about dreaming, I don't know about this. I also didn't want you all to dream through the opening remarks this morning, so that was a contention too. But make no mistake, daring to dream is a challenge. And what I'm daring you to dream, more importantly, what I'm daring you to do is to step outside of your comfort zone, to think about new perspectives, to think about this from the perspective of the community members that we work with, to think about things in the perspective of my 10-year-old grandson and your future children, if you don't have them already. But most importantly, after Daring to Dream, I'm daring you to achieve. Will the future be better for the community members we work with? Will the future be better for my grandson, your children, your grandchildren? So that's the challenge that I have for you for the next two days. Really dare to dream about what we could do and then go out and achieve it. But I wanna take a step back and look backwards into EWB and most importantly into our backyard. In April of 2000, Dr. Bernard Amade hired a group of landscape workers to work in his backyard in Colorado. As they spoke, those workers told him about their village in Belize, about the needs of the young Mayan people in this village. Bernard remembered that encounter, but didn't do much about it for about two years until he received an email from them. And they were inviting him to their village in Belize to look at their water supply. And he went, and it was life-changing for him. It was there that he learned about 950 Mayan Indians living in the heart of the Belize jungle lacked access to clean water and sanitation. Many of the children in that village did not go to school because they had to walk miles to get water every single day. So the challenge was really to come up with a solution that was affordable for the local people who earned less than a dollar a day as they had to operate and maintain it in the future. So Professor Amade went home to Boulder he enlisted colleagues, he enlisted students, and over the course of the next year designed a, a plan to put into action. And he went back to that community in the, Maya, in the Belize jungle and installed a ram pump, which was powered by a waterfall. And that was the first EWB project. Since then, we've grown from a handful of passionate individuals to thousands of passionate volunteers working on hundreds of engineering projects around the globe. We've scaled up significantly. I've had the pleasure of working for EWB for the past 17 years, taking the reins from Bernard. I was inspired by his vision. I'm inspired by all of you and what you achieve and where we go in the future. We have exciting times ahead. But a couple of things we have to pay attention to for us. For those of you that have been following social media that I'm linked in with, you may have noticed that my position has been officially posted for somebody else to fill. It's time to pass the torch. This is something that's been in the works for a long time. I practiced my husband when I turned 60. I would quit traveling for EWB and start traveling for him, with him. So with my 59th birthday approaching, it is time to find the next CEO of EWB. Will that be one of you? I don't know. I wouldn't dream of leaving you or EWB without an outstanding leader, and I'm absolutely committed to finding my replacement who can take this organization to the next level. People say, big shoes to fill. I say it's time for a new pair of shoes. 
So speaking of longevity, I know that we've got some people that are brand new and some that have been with us for quite a while. So I want everybody to stand up. And as I ask people to sit down, I want you to pay attention to those who remain standing because those are our mentors. Those are sources of wisdom for us here at AWB. So the newbies of EWB that have been around for two years, sit down. How about five years? If you've been here for five years, sit down. Still a lot of you. And I can't see the overflow room back there, so I'm, I'm hoping you're following along. 10 years. Still a few of you left up. How about 15? Who's standing in the back? Oh, hi, Tony. <laughs> So there's a few folks that have been around as long as I have, but find out who in this crowd you need to talk to for your project, your career, your future, the community's future. There's great knowledge and wisdom in the crowd. So this year, we have 707 projects underway, assisting many people in their infrastructure from water, structures, sanitation, lights, fish ponds, you name it. We're working with people to meet their needs. We're also ensuring healthy birth stories by providing rural health clinics with access to clean water and sanitation. So health clinics are a critical first point of care in rural Malawi, as those clinics serve up to 600 patients per day. When that health clinic lacks access to clean water and sanitation, it is really hard for the medical professionals to care for their patients. To date, our partnership with Freshwater International has rehabilitated water systems at seven of those clinics. Our work including, included installing new solar electrical pumps, water tanks, and upgrading critical portions of the pipeline to the main clinic buildings, the maternal shelters, and staff housing. This is a life-changing project for the people in those communities. It underscores the importance of water, sanitation, and hygiene, or WASH, in healthcare facilities. Universal, affordable, and sustainable access to WASH is a key public health issue. So we're going to talk about this more tomorrow and really talk about ways that we can move the needle on the United Nations goals for WASH and healthcare facilities. So stay tuned for that tomorrow morning. On the subject of contributing, making it easier for everyone to engage has been one of my priorities. Because we value all of you and your time and your talent, we want to eliminate barriers within the organization and make it easier for you to be more effective. So we're doing two things. One is already done, and that is changing Volunteer Village so that anybody, anywhere, regardless of membership, can be a volunteer of Engineers Without Borders. We've removed the payment gateway of being a member to access to Volunteer Village. So I would encourage you all to get into Volunteer Village, fill out your profile so we know who you are, we can put you to work or recruit you for ongoing opportunities. Secondly, as a lot of you have been asking, I'd like to let you know we'll be moving into the new cost-sharing model with the international community project teams in early 2020, which will eliminate the project fees and the program fees as well. After the EWB USA Board of Directors approval yesterday of our 2020 budget, we are estimating conservatively that the organization will contribute 30% of the project costs in 2020. <laughs> so I know I just brought up a huge topic and you all are gonna have questions about how's this gonna work? And honestly, I'm not gonna answer them right now, but what I would encourage you to do is to write them down and get them to staff. There's a session that Gerard and Doug Stahl are having later, which has a little bit more detail, but we're gonna answer those questions and we will um, answer them through the volunteer news and different uh, vol volunteer village, the village square, so that you guys know what is happening when it is happening as we approach that, that time. Um, so don't forget your question, Just don't try and figure out the answer now. So we hope with these two changes that this will allow you to focus your efforts on what you do best, which is the projects, the service to community, and gaining and sharing knowledge. I also want our students to have the opportunity to showcase their talent 
and see their EWB work incorporated into curricula. To this end, we are piloting two new um, educational programs this year. So the first is in collaboration with the National Academy of Engineering. The National Academy has de developed a certification program called the NAE Grand Challenges Scholars Program. And this program aims to enhance the training that engineering students need to address the 21st century challenges. We've created an EWB USA track within the overall framework of the National Academy Grand Challenge of Scholars program, and it will offer EWB USA students an avenue to earn National Academy certification through their EWB USA work. The second pilot that we have today is the Engineering for People Design Challenge. So that's in partnership with EWB UK and EWB South Africa. And together, we have launched that challenge at participating universities, and it allows you to design a solution appropriate to an established real-world challenge. The teams then compete with each other locally, they compete with each other across the country, and it ends up in a grand finale and final showcase um, in front of peers, academics, and industry representatives. So those two programs are in pilot right now. But back to the projects. We know we have unmet infrastructure needs right here in the US, in our backyards. Our roads, bridges, pipes are in disrepair, greatly impacting the quality of people's lives here. Many low-income communities miss out on vital infrastructure projects. To address this gap in services, we've launched the What's in My Backyard, or WIMBY campaign that you will hear about at this conference. This campaign draws attention to this need and connects underserved communities with volunteer engineers through our Community Engineering Corps. From a community garden in the heart of Brooklyn to soil testing in New Orleans, we're assisting local communities to thrive. And I challenge all of you today, what's in your backyard? Do you know? Can you find out? What can we do to help our own communities? We know that many of you are already engaged in local community projects, and we'd like to make it easier for you to engage through the Community Engineering Corps in addressing these needs. And lastly, this takes us to our newer work directly addressing and preparing for natural disasters. With hurricanes, typhoons, typhoons cyclones, and natural disasters on the rise, we're assisting communities in the recovery from natural disasters as well as in preparation for new ones. We've done tremendous work in Dominica, Mozambique, and the Bahamas. Our engineers are working on resilient housing solutions along with hardening key buildings that will serve as places of refuge so people will have a safe place to wait out the next storm. This year, in partnership with International Planned Parenthood and the Clara Lionel Foundation, we're getting ahead of those storms by collaborating on hardening healthcare facilities throughout the Caribbean. And finally, we are seeking answers to one of the world's most pressing challenges, the challenge of affordable, low-cost refrigeration in remote communities. Refrigeration means less food waste, more opportunities for farmers, fewer trips to the market, and safe storage for leftovers and vaccines. The challenge, which is open now and to all, will be awarding up to 10 awards between 25 to 50,000 to individuals or teams who develop prototypes of either a small commercial refrigerator or a community ice maker, affordable for off-grid communities. You can see from one project in Belize to addressing, addressing natural disasters and catalyzing thinking around these global issues, we've not only dreamed big, but we've achieved big. But there's a lot of work to be done. So I encourage you to not only be dreamers at this conference, but set the stage for achieving. And I'd like to offer you three pieces of advice. Dream boldly. Know what you want and keep that end goal in sight. Believe in yourself and your teams. And act in spite of your fears. Surround yourself with people who push you to be better. And I think that would be everybody in this room today. <laughs> 